Here we're given a linear first order differential equation with the initial condition y of negative two equals negative one. We're asked to find the interval in which the solution of the initial value problem above is certain to exist. So looking at our notes below, if we have a linear first order differential equation written in this form here with this initial condition, if p of t and f of t are both continuous on an open interval from a to b, then there exists a unique solution for every t on the interval. And if we find all the intervals for which both p of t and f of t are continuous, this is called the interval of validity. And if the interval contains t sub zero, which is the input value of the initial condition, then there exists a unique solution on the interval that satisfies the initial value problem. So to answer this question, we'll first find the interval of validity which will be the intervals to which both p of t and f of t are continuous, and then we'll find the interval that contains the input value of negative two. That interval is the answer to our question, meaning it's the interval in which the solution of the initial value problem is certain to exist. But the first step is to make sure the given differential equation is in the correct form, or this form here. So we need this first term to be dy dt or y prime so our first step is to divide everything by the quantity t minus one. So if we divide both sides by the quantity t minus one, we'd have y prime, or if we want dy dt, plus natural log of the quantity t plus three, divided by the quantity t minus one, times y equals six t, divided by the quantity t minus one. Now that we have it in the correct form, we can identify p of t and f of t. Notice p of t is equal to natural log of the quantity t plus three divided by the quantity t minus one, and f of t is equal to six t divided by the quantity t minus one. Next we'll determine where p of t and f of t are continuous. So looking at the numerator of p of t, we know the input for natural log has to be positive, which means the quantity t plus three must be greater than zero. So if we subtract three on both sides, t must be greater than negative three. And now looking at the denominator, notice how we can't have division by zero, so t can't equal positive one. So this would be the interval where p of t is continuous Using interval notation, we could say it would be the open interval from negative three to one union, the open interval from one to infinity. Again, this is the interval where p of t is continuous. Now let's look at f of t. The only restriction on f of t is that we can't have division by zero, which would occur where t equals one. So the only restriction on f of t is that t can't equal positive one which means f of t is continuous on the open interval from negative infinity to one union one to infinity. So the interval of validity is the interval where both f of t and p of t are continuous. So let's go ahead and graph both these intervals and see where they intersect. The open interval from negative three to one would be here, and the open interval from one to infinity would be here. So this is the interval where p of t is continuous. And now let's graph the interval where f of t is continuous, which would be all real numbers except one, which would be this interval here. So notice how the intersection of these two intervals, or the intervals for which both f of t and p of t are continuous, would be this interval here. The open interval from negative three to one and the open interval from one to infinity. Let's go ahead and write that out. The interval of validity, using interval notation would be the open interval from negative three to one, union one to infinity. Or if we want to use inequalities, we could say when t is greater than negative three and less than one, or when t is greater than one. But now to answer our question, we want to find which of these intervals contains the input value of negative two. Notice how negative two is in this interval here, and therefore, 
the interval in which the solution of the initial value problem is certain to exist is when t is greater than three and less than one. I hope you found this helpful.